everyone out there on the various platforms. Welcome to the Puff Drink Talk podcast, the podcast where four great friends sit around, talk a lot about nothing, and uh, smoke a little bit, drink a little bit, converse about their experiences of life, liberty, and love for various <laughs> things. Uh, I am your host, Conrad Chubach. I'm Dylan Wilson. I'm Hilton Gill. And I'm Josh Abaych. And this week, we have some various topics we're going to talk about. But first, before we get into the topics, uh, I think there needs to be an announcement announcement made of what uh, everyone is going, well, almost all of us are going to be smoking today. Okay. All right. And I love the smile in Hilton's face. This maybe brings me. I'm smoking a pipe! Yeah! What? Not only one. You've been converted. But two. You've turned. <laughs> You've turned. <laughs> but I'm on the dark side. <laughs> good, good, good. And uh, I've already packed. So. Good. I'm already packed so I can just like light it up and. Uh, How do you feel like your packing skills are? Uh, I'm. I'm. Uh, I step up of a professional level right now. Gotcha. You're you know, this is my third time smoking. Yeah. And I, I already feel like I'm professional. You're plus, Jedi master. Yeah, I'm a Jedi. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Right on. So right. I've watched about um, <coughs> last night from um, 6 p.m. to about midnight. All videos on YouTube how to <laughs> pack and smoke. Pack it. and smoke pipe. <laughs> and it's funny you say that. How many of those videos did one person change their perspective or, or their methodology compared to the next person? There's like three times. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. You know, out of all the videos, there's like... They use similar phrases. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like well, yes. three types, although two are pretty much the same. Right. Right. You know? Right. And then one guy is a little bit different, but that was it. Right. But our packing is all the same. Right, packing's gonna be all the same. Yeah, I have a different way though. They're doing three steps. I'm doing four. Just to <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, like I'm Jedi. No. I'm Jedi. Oh, okay. All right. You know, I was genuinely curious. I'm not Jedi yet. I've been doing this I for years. I got a good drawing here. So it's loosening off. Tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of resistance. Yeah. So it's gonna be perfect. Well, what are you smoking? What tobacco are you smoking? I am smoking the special number one. Mm. Can I see it? I don't know what that is, but yeah, you can smell it. Let me smell. It looks very dark. The leaves look very dark, aged, fruity, fruity. Mm-hmm. It's got like a plum or apple. Yeah, a little yeah, bit of smell. coffee smell to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, plum, plum is that de- is definitely one dark. of the yeah, yeah dark is one of the common smells for coffee, right? So right. you're right. So, and I've been smoking the brother, special number two, Two. for the longest time. I'm actually on the last little bit of leaves in there. And then I've migrated to, uh, I forget what nut it was called. I I I forgot. Yeah. I got that one as well. Oh, okay. I that yesterday and it smelled really good. Really? Mm -hmm. So I haven't smoked it. No, this one I smoked this morning. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And then yesterday... Yesterday I smoked the no 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 sorry I smoked that one yesterday yes it was a very nice yeah very mild though it's like there's nothing to it right I mean, it's like as as um, I would say harshness it's right. so smooth you know all the way through it's unbelievable then this morning I smoked the Staghorn which is a British or a English. I should say English. English. Um, tobacco. Oh, blend. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and a little bit stronger. Um, it's not as the sense of it. It's not the same. Like that one has a little bit of a better smell. Mm-hmm. But uh, this one gave me a little bit more joy. I think that that one would potentially be like in the morning. And then this right. would be like lunch. <laughs> Gotcha. And I'm, I'm hoping that this one is dinner, dinner. time. <laughs> <laughs> so which one are you smoking out of that one? Is that the special two? Or special the one? The special one. Okay. Yeah, this is the special one. So okay. I think um, you're going to keep that one close to you. Yeah. Um, I'm also smoking pipe today. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Another announcement! <laughs> Man. Uh, this will be... You're the, you're the cigar specialist of the group in here. Come on. 
We have a new special. Yes. <laughs> the only one, actually. <laughs> the stick has been passed. It's been promoted, right? George. Yeah. <laughs> and um, this will be my first time ever smoking a pipe. So. Oh yeah, it's gonna be on camera. The very first time ever. However, packing skills, I will say. Watching him watch videos and watching a couple, I do already feel. I mean, there's nothing to it. I feel like a master. Right. I feel like the draw is perfect. <laughs> Tomorrow you're gonna be feeling like a Jedi. We'll like. find out. <laughs> I need one more day to be a master Jedi. Right. Uh, my blend is called the Highland Whiskey. It's kind of uh, whiskey infused. I'm assuming. Got some darker colored leaves in there. It's a nice blend. Summer. Almost black looking. And then you got some lighter tones, some medium tones. It's a nice little blends. I'm looking forward to it. Very aromatic, that smells one later. good. We're gonna switch off halfway through. I do have another little corn cob guy here that It's so nice, man. Might get into that as well. It's so nice and pretty, look. Look at that, Jordan. I like corn cobs. They're cool. The the one thing with corn cobs though, corn cob pipes I should specify, is that you can't get them too too hot. Because you will start burning the outer casing of them. Pipes in general, you're not supposed to get too, yeah, too hot, anyways. But, but I mean, yeah, it's ten bucks. It's ten dollars, <laughs> and it looks. Cool. How do you manage to not let it uh, heat so much? Time, time, time. Okay. Yeah, and then you don't do fast draws. You do, you do like quick little puffs, smooth draws. Yeah. Even if it's long, it's like you know, not too much. It's not like deep inhales to get the get the fire going it's just kind of like it's, a, it's just like you're sipping through water not like trying to get your thirsty over with all right so if and when i convert i'll have to adjust yes because <laughs> you are you are buffer yes yeah, yeah. and yeah. our spirit of the day is this you japanese whiskey wow um in Bushido, the unwritten samurai code of conduct, you, is the principle representing courage. This is a whiskey of courage. So how do you feel the difference? I'm ready to take on the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's actually really good. It's got like a sweet, subtle note to it, almost floral. It's very subtle though. It's pretty good. It's light. And George, what are you smoking today? I know you're not uh, divulging into the pipe world. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet, but. Next week, who knows? This is a, yeah, this is a High Clare Castle. Um, Ian told me that it's named after a castle in England that are well known for keeping way traditional ways of uh, making say, cigars, you know? So these guys follow the protocol from this castle there. It's a very light cigar. That's why I asked, I asked Ian from Smokers Abbey to, you know, like, give me something. It's going to be light. I'm going to enjoy it, my friends, while they smoke pipes. No, it didn't say that. I didn't know, but, uh, yeah. So Now you do. Yeah. So far, so good. Very nice. Yeah. So what's your subject today? I'm already talking to, you know, with my... <laughs> Are you my or yeah. something? Yeah. Mm. Oh my pipe voice in. <laughs> oh. Oh, this is nice. This is really nice. It, just it's lightweight, good. just this is something that you would have in the morning time. A morning morning cup, morning cup of coffee, a morning morning yeah, pipe. That's a morning. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yours is made of what? Acry acrylic? What is that? Um It's wood. Wood. Oh. So the the top piece is acrylic. Okay. But the bottom base bowl wood is oh. wood. Wood with acrylic. Okay. Yeah. There's a really woody, woodsy note to it. A little subtle hint of that. Uh, it smells oh. It's amazing. This is going to be nice. Like all the, ar you know, all the aromas mixing. You know, <laughs> all the sense, all the sense combined, of, like, yeah, oh, combined. A little bit of everything. This, this one, this special one is pretty good. It has a... Um, is it dinner? Mm-mm. Dessert? Dessert? <laughs> Yeah, because it's kind of sweet. These damn lighters, I tell you what, are these matches. Thank I you. tell you, this one might be good. This might be dinner. I didn't have the breakfast and lunch, but it tastes like dinner to me. It's pretty freaking good. Oh, all of yours, is it 
also made of acrylic or it's plastic? The end. The it's end. Part? The, no, it's the plastic. End. Yeah. That's plastic. Well, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Conrad's is fancy. Ours is very cheap. <laughs> <coughs> We're Excuse just me. common folk. Yeah, but the price point, I mean, from cheap and expensive, I mean, the most expensive one we saw was what, 180 bucks? Yes. You know, top, top, top tier, where entry level is five, ten bucks. Yeah. So Pretty you can true. get a you know you can get a good cigar or a pipe, probably something like this. I mean, this was a present, but I'm I'm gonna say thirty, forty, fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a good one that'll last. I mean, from what the guy was saying, uh, I don't know that one looks more right. like um fifty to between fifty and seventy. Possibly, I, I don't know. Because there are some that didn't look as good as that one. It was like forty bucks. Oh really? Mm -hmm. hmm. But so, thank. I mean, this is going to be. This is. I mean, this will last me hmm. till I die. A lifetime. Yeah. So there was a guy on the internet, and he had like a corn cob, and that he was smoking. That was his granddad. Isn't that amazing? So it probably has been around for forty to fifty years. Mm-hmm. How many times can you smoke with this amount here? Well, so that's what that's what Hilton and I were just discussing before okay. we started this. I had a two ounce bag. Two ounce. Mm -hmm. two ounces. I got that for Christmas and what, we're almost into May? One ounce, probably a month. Okay. Heavy smoking. Heavy smoking about a month. You know, okay. once or twice. I mean, I would smoke this twice a week. Yeah. And I lasted from Christmas time all the way until, so four months. Months. Two ounces, so yeah, two one months. ounce a month. Yeah, yeah. every two months, twice, yeah. every other month, a week. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, I have an ounce twice a week. Month. Yes. If you smoke every day, mm -hmm. and then that might last you a week. And it was what, like seven bucks, seven six bucks, bucks with tax, yeah. Yeah. For a week's worth of yeah, so pipe smoking pleasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's less time though. You smoke like for twenty five minutes. It is my, time, my packing is about 34 minutes. And in times of dire straits, <laughs> smoke a pipe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? What I, what I like about pipes is a lot of times you can smoke inside because the smell isn't as strong as a cigar, concentrated as a cigar, where people, a lot of people are very like, oh Jesus, you lighten up another cigar, it's, you know, it's stinky and stuff like that. Usually, you know, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the times you light up a pipe inside, it's not as strong and pungent. Let me just check if it's recording because I, I don't want to miss those. <laughs> I put it hot sauce in this one here too. So the man, the smell, the the smoke. I, I'm picking up three times more than than I should from this from this cigar. Yeah, because you know, because you drink, because I'm drinking, yeah, because yeah, the hot sauce. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it looks like a Bloody Mary. It almost does, right? Yeah. Doesn't taste like a Bloody Mary. I, I love Bloody Mary. There I is know. other lows in here. You know, because like, you said that you liked it, and last year at the beach, I ordered one, and, and I regretted <laughs> the whole of my existence before to that point and beyond. Oh my god, yeah, that, that seems serious. I don't have as much of a feeling as you do, but I do not <laughs> I like Bloody I, do, it. I don't like Bloody Marys either. I can't get into them. Why? You, you don't like the bitterness, maybe? Like the, the tomato. tomato. Oh, the tomato. It reminds me of like a V. But that's a fruit. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. It's an acquired taste. Yeah, it's a yeah. gay fruit. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a gay it's a gay fruit. Come on. But we have a gayer fruit. Yeah, there's gayer fruit yeah, yeah, out there. Like for it. sure. There's more flamboyant <laughs> fruit out there. You don't like spaghetti? I love it. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> you can't use that. Pizza. You need pizza. You need pizza, right? <laughs> I'm gonna say that the gay. The, gay, the gays yeah, love I've me. been gay for so long. Yeah. I love the gay. Gay they they vote for me. Yeah. They love me. I love them. It's just a gay fest around here with tomatoes. Uh, but anyways, so um, today's topic, we were keeping up with the current theme of current events. 
Right. There's two po- two topics that I thought were well. One is very very current and kind of affecting us politically and not politically, but you know socially, um, with the TikTok ban and the financial aid that's been given or was approved to give to Ukraine yet again, um, which was kind of part of the same package. Yeah. It was if you want uh, if you want Ukraine to get more funding to keep the war going, then you have to sign this bill. Also, TikTok needs to be eventually banned or owned by someone else. They were actually approved together, right? Yeah, they were actually they were approved together. Correct. They're putting, Correct. putting the bill to pass. Yes, with the same. It has both in the same. Yes, both are in the same. Are in the same. So it's like a package deal. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So there's that. And then I thought it was pretty interesting. So I had just ran across a post. I, and I've seen this shark before online, but it's a it's basically a blind shark that lives in the the Arctic. You said you've seen you sent a picture to us. Yes. And it's a it's just a giant ugly looking shark <laughs> fish creature. But they they carbon dated they did some type of dating. Mm-hmm. It's a different uh, method, right? To, yeah, to to see how old that shark is, and they came back with an astonishing number of like three hundred and what was the exact number? Three hundred thirty, three hundred sixty years old. Let's see. Oh, three hundred ninety-two. Three hundred and ninety-two year old. Four hundred years. Four. Yeah, we like can just a, round up to say like missing teeth. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's like an old cat. We know that you know? turtles can live a very long. Yes. But that's the first time I've, I've heard about sharks. I've, sharks that old. I've never heard of anything living to be almost 400 years old. So it's either, it's one of those things like, could it be a fluke? Mm-hmm. Of the, you know, the data carving or the uh, the dating of it? Or Please. is it is it just a miracle of nature that this thing actually lives to be that old? Do you know how long a regular shark lives? So much better. I have no idea. Yeah. That's a very good question. So I'm, yeah, I'm assuming, yeah, as to, in comparison to each other. But still, anything living 400 years old, yeah, yeah, yeah. that to me is, and especially living in harsh conditions, what I consider harsh conditions of the Arctic, and especially it's it's supposed to be a blind shark that lives on the bottom. It's like a bottom dweller shark. It doesn't go up to the top very often, but it stays down towards the bottom. So like a fucking catfish? Kind of, kind of. Mm-hmm. But so you're talking immense pressure from being, you know, great depths of the ocean. Yeah. Bottom feeder, probably slow. They say it's it's blind. How big is it? What's the size? It's a big, big shark too. It's Ooh, well what's over his name? the Greenland shark. It's been wandering since. Six give it a name like John or something like that. <laughs> good old, good old John's just been. You know, four hundred year old name. Yeah. How about a Muha? Muhammad. Muha. You know, like, uh, what is that? Uh, Thundercats's enemy. You remember that? Like, he no, lives, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta give him something like that. Yeah. Right. Just a cool name. Yeah. Same the shark and finding Nemo or something. Deep. But I just can't, I just, I think it's amazing that it's, has been wandering the ocean since 1627. Yeah. That That's to me is mind-blowing. That to me is mind-blowing. So, we can discuss that a little bit, kind of like the craziness of nature. Um, and then, uh, of course, we have our sports that we need to get into. Oh, we yeah. have uh, quite a various topics. To... Now, what is that to talk about the shark, then? Great, lives a long time. <laughs> Basketball. <laughs> no, it is interesting though. You know, well, it's it's like, because you can just huge. The, the normally, the size of yeah. the size of the animal, the less they live, right? So, and that's kind of the core. That's that's kind of why I thought it was interesting. Is if that dating is correct on this shark, we'll, we'll stay on the subject. If the dating is right with the shark being almost 400 years old, how does it live for something that, that big? How does it live to be that old? What makes that so special? The heart, the way that it, it beats. But I mean, as far as are there, from finding out 
how this operates being so old, is there anything that could be used to help us live longer? Any medical advantages no, so, or... Okay, I see. Okay. Yeah. I... Can you pass me a water, please? Mm-hmm. You know, I'll tell you, it's all over the place here. I see that um, they found out in 2016 about this. Really? Yeah, 400 year old green, Greenland shark is oldest verte vertebral animal. And then I can see India, like uh, Indian newspapers, Chinese, I mean, many different places. And one of them asked here, how long do they live? And then uh, they say, a scientist estimate that Greenland shark lives at least 250 years. Hmm. They may live Minimum. over 500, 500 years. Jesus Christ. Oh, so it's a known thing then. Yeah, I didn't know. I also I didn't know. Yeah, it, exactly. So. But it's still relatively new oh. if they're just finding out about it. Yeah. I looked at less than blinded. 10 years ago. <laughs> Look at those eyes. Or lack of glare in the eyes. Or Definitely toothless. <laughs> yeah. so I'm saying it's like when animals get old, like dogs, cats, they start losing their teeth. Like that's what that looks like. Just. They mention here the type of. So what is it eating? It yeah. can't bite Opens on the stuff mouth and just put it in, and the digestive system takes care, you know, care of it. So I'm wondering if it's if it's got to be some the slow digestion. It's like you with the sausage. That actually makes you live longer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the secret. Lose yeah. your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> no, but look, look at this. Interesting. The age of this particular shark was estimated to be 392. Which was 92? the midpoint of a range between 272 and 512. It's all an estimate. Yeah. It's an estimate. It's an estimate. Yeah, so it says here is a writer carbon dating to measure carbon iso iso isotopes. Is that yeah. Iso yeah, isotopes, right? In the shark eye tissue. Interesting. So from, from his eye, so. I think those small organs are the hardest one to survive. But the eyes, you know, like. Oh, well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, probably because it's so dark, it's What's maybe it's not exposed. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's the point of having eyes at that point? <laughs> Right, but I really think it's interesting because, like I was saying, what medical, uh, what what medically can we take from this shark and apply it to humans, if anything, for longevity? Because, like it says, it's the only, it's the longest living vertebrate animal, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, on Earth that could potentially live up to five hundred plus Don't years. Don't we old. already do like cartilage or whatever it's called? The that, that soft bone. Cartilage. cartilage cartilage well we yeah it's in our ears no but uh, nose. Don't, don't we already have that in the market that people can buy from sharks well you see that uh, my uh, you see uh, when i soup. took the surgery you know they don't have they don't use oh. stitches anymore they use it something from shark in order to yeah. avoid the you know the the scars the scars yeah so this side i don't have scars anymore i almost don't have it anymore this one i i still have it because it's uh I did it five, six months later after the, the first one and I had an infection there. But uh, this side is perfect. Huh. So you, you, what you said is true. And many sci-fi uh, movies use this actually as something to improve your longevity, longevity to recover, especially recovery. So if you have like some type of like regenerative tissue That's or a, yeah. something, something like that? Yeah. We were talking to some doctor guy at, um, at the pub one day, and um, he was talking about like how some jellyfish basically yes. could live forever. Like they go through their life cycle, and then they do something, and it like restarts like from infancy. So they just like they go from being old to like a baby. They just never die potentially. Something oh, to do with their cells. Oh, the guy you mentioned, the guy you guys mentioned it before. Huh? Mm -hmm. And hopefully he's going to be there on the next race. So oh, you can meet him. You, you would be fat. You'd have a fascinating conversation with this mm -hmm. guy. You'd like him. Yeah. I'd love to talk to him about this Greenland show. It's a little distracting yes. from the F1 race, but. Oh, uh, yeah, he, he would. <laughs> but it was a good conversation. He could come to our podcast. <laughs> Let's invite him. Oh, and it'll be the first Sunday of the month. So they'll be doing the Pflugerville, uh, but that is on a Saturday. Well, it's Saturdays only, right? Yeah, that is true. I'm not going to be there Saturday. I've got a garden party. 400-year-old sharks may hold the secret to longer life for humans. Earth.com. Whatever it is. I don't... I'm, I'm, right, I don't yeah, know. just breezing over some of it. Mm -hmm. But that's what... Yeah, 
I don't know. I think it's I think it's very interesting. Mm. Definitely, you know how we we've incorporated. No, go ahead. I said there's something there. Yeah. Well, there's something there, and it's and it's how we're incorporating animals and their specialty and their traits, and how can we do reenact or have something similar to us to help us, like you were saying, to get rid of scars. So I was just realizing that many topics, almost every single topic we bring, it somehow leads us to, let's see how this, this is going to impact in the future. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> you realize that? You got to take notes. <laughs> then go back and see. <laughs> yeah, because this one, he like, he was like, oh, five years time. Practice. Yeah. And then, then we will have potentially done something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Who oh, knows? Uh, let's face it, one thing. The, the deep sea, right? So it's the place that we have more difficulty to explore mm -hmm. because of all the barriers we have and yeah. the kind of uh, vessels we have to build in order to get to this. So it is still a mystery. So there are so many mysteries and so much undiscovered. So much undiscovered in this under, under the sea. So mm -hmm. and actually, that goes to the civilization zero from one. It's exactly how we, it's when we explore the whole the earth whole you know earth. so this is definitely the whole of our ecosystem yeah, yeah. you call it yeah we can yeah as a as a whole right so because um we are exploring um the space just more probably just as much as we're exploring the deep waters right so yeah right right yeah. that's just as interesting it might but, be right One's closer. Yeah, yeah. But just as difficult to explore. Sure. Just as difficult. We haven't been able to do it. So. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson was saying that the distance between the <laughs> deepest part of the ocean and the highest, uh, like, mountain. mountain is so many miles. It, it's like you drive that in one, one day. Like, no, not one day. Just one drive. Like one, one drive, yeah. One. You go to work on that distance. Because it's so close. Wow. Oh. It's like so many miles deep and so many miles up, and that's it. But when I say so many, it's like, let's say six or seven, something like that. Well, in I don't remember now, but it's something I don't know something if I'm like going to use this, the right word, but it's like, I was at in Santa Catarina, in Brazil. One of my, you know, solid moments of solitude. And it was, man, it's just that you have a river on the side and you have the, the ocean on the other end and the waters actually get together at a certain point. And so it's beautiful, right? And I was just tripping. No alcohol, nothing there. Just imagining, Jesus Christ. So if I look at, if you look it down, I was just, had this, I was like 17, I think. Just imagining that the same thing we have in the surface, we have it down there. So it's just that how the water moves throughout the, the millennia, right? Mm -hmm. So, what is here now, probably 30,000 30, years, is going to be somewhere else, you know, like the, the surface, uh, according to any anything that can happen. And so, I remember being there and thinking about that the first time I, I, I thought about that. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> but uh, I was, I was going to bring up how much of the total Earth is land mass? All right. Have I said that to you? Like twenty five percent, something like that, roughly. Twenty five, twenty five percent, thirty percent. Yeah, it's like seventy five percent water, isn't it? No, no, that's it. Or oh, the surface, only of the surface. But the 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 earth, the from the center of the earth, it's like ten times more than water. Water uh, occupies yeah. only the surface, seventy five percent. Yeah. 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 And that's you, what's if so you, crazy. If you remove all the water and dissolve the, 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 the all that's left is dirt, right? <laughs> right, but I mean, out of all of the land that we have explored. Mm, okay. We've explored, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give a, an, uh, a generous amount. I'm gonna say that we've explored about 70% of most land. I'm still gonna say that there's a lot of uncharted areas, especially like in the Amazon, in Africa, Antarctica. 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 A lot of different places where it has yet to be explored. We as as um, 
um, how do I say that? Because maybe the uh, indigenous, you know, they are there. Like it's wrong, like the Amazon, for example. Where? Right. You know, they might, you know, have been there and explored and then found out that, well, this is not nice to live here. Let's move our tribe somewhere else. And I get that. So that's why I'm still going to give a generous amount, about 70%. I'm going to say 70% of all the land we've explored. The civilized men. Yes. Civilized the, men, the, in, even the indigenous. European, the European... Uh, Colonizers. Colonizers. Yeah. Like we all are. From, <laughs> yeah, from like the... 1400. Should we change your now. accent right now? <laughs> we can try <laughs> that. Something yeah. more why like. We, why don't we do that? European <laughs> accent. No, not no. at all. Yeah, not, not in Texas. Not, not in Texas. Texas. <laughs> Texas. Especially in Texas. <laughs> but I'm, my, my point being is like, out of all of the land, and we've ex I'm going to say we've explored more land than we have water. And I'm still going to uh -huh. put it as a generous amount of 70%. But water, we probably only explored like 2%. Yeah, we barely know anything about our oceans, and it makes up more of the Earth than land does. So we're far from discovering any sorts of truths, and you know, there's still lots of mysteries and unexplained things that we we have no idea about. But think about it: once we find a way to excavate, right, to go deep, and we're gonna double the size of the land well known from us, for, for us, because it's super deep and yep. it's more than water. That's why it gives you no bites at all. Mm. Mm. So. No bite at all. No, I hear what you're saying. I, I think Nothing. it's interesting. Yeah. But well, then speaking about that, one land mass is trying to conquer the other one in uh, Russia and Ukraine. <laughs> Yeah. And the United States decided to give them, I don't even, I've lost count of how many goddamn billions now. 61 billion uh. to, to uh, Ukraine, <laughs> particularly. We've got somebody here that never loses count. Yeah. <laughs> what are we here? Why? He's, here's the he's accountant. Keeping tabs. Yeah, yeah, he's keeping tabs. Here's the accountant over <laughs> well, here. Well, I am an accountant, right? So I'm graduating the county, so. Good, yeah, yeah there we yeah. go, yeah. Oh, but that's good, because then we have somebody that yeah. knows at least yeah. some numbers, right? I just throw out bullshit and... and billions and, and billions. Yeah. And George <laughs> over here is like, no, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, 65. Yeah, well, 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 61, no. actually. That's what he's about to say. You didn't want to flex, you know? You didn't want to say. <laughs> Thanks for flexing, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, uh, well... Yeah, I shouldn't be speaking and eating at the same time, right? And it's smoking. She's the trifecta. Yeah, the trifecta. Well, um, the Easy whole mouth. Yeah, <laughs> the whole the whole Trinity. package is ninety five billion, and it's part Jeez. together with the TikTok. It's part of a um, a strategy, you know, to get close to the allies. This is what they claim. Okay, that's what the the claim is. I'm not saying that this, it is what I believe. It is what it is. But this is what they are saying. So uh, to prevent cyber attacks, I, I sent you guys earlier one because my question is, I read it, uh, I think a week ago or something, regarding how India banned TikTok. They had 250 million followers, way more than America. And what happened to them? So it's four, it's been four years since they banned. You huh, know? So it's, yeah, so it's good to compare. Right, and they said, "Oh, thousands of jobs are you know like what we're we gonna do with thousands of jobs and thousands of small business, right?" And they had a partnership with um, um, Instagram, Facebook, and um, I, I forgot the other one. I don't know. There are two or three different ones that, and then they the, the reels for for Instagram, and I forgot the other one. And basically, what they say that they made partnerships with this company with the companies in order to observe part of the. Um, workforce mm. you know? so it wasn't just like a dominant <clears throat> dominant social media that took over for India yeah now like they divide in two or three so the competitors stepped up and then said oh yeah we take it the India government actually helped helped it to happen because mm -hmm. of the jobs you know so they didn't feel that much and honestly I don't know what's behind TikTok I really don't know what's behind um, look I am pro 
open business. You guys, I think I've already made myself very clear on this. Um, I'm a, as a, you know, I don't use it, so I, I don't care if it goes away or not. Yeah, but the point is, the whole point is, you know, uh, the how open we are to cyber attacks. Uh, our data is being taken. I mean, does it matter if it's by Facebook? Does it matter if it's by <laughs> if it's by the Chinese? I think it matters. You know, I think to the government it matters. It, Facebook's taking your data. Okay, they're an American company, but you know, like the chi you know TikTok who own, or China who owns TikTok. It's like okay, now that's a whole different story. And I, from the government perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From exactly. the government perspective. Yeah. Uh, that's why I mentioned it. Yeah. From my perspective, I don't know. No, I don't know how no. much Facebook has the American interest at heart. Mm. Yeah. How much do they have? I don't know. They they claim they have, right? But if you have this debate with Facebook, yeah. how, let alone this debate with a Chinese company, yeah. And my, how do you how do you see this? My my well, I'll let someone else talk uh -huh. this. Dylan, what do you what do you think? <laughs> I don't even know. I think it's been talked about for a while. So mm -hmm. I think you, you'll never know anybody's true motive behind things. Um, there is an astonishing difference between TikTok in America versus TikTok in China, though. Yes. So that is kind of telling, I guess. They don't have. There's like parameters on it, certain times that you can watch, limits on it for children, and the type of content is just completely different. But the thing, that infinite scroll, people just get lost in it. So, I don't know. But it is a way for information to get out there. So, whether it's misinformation or real information, it's people putting stuff out there. As far as businesses using it, and them, there's so many other forms of social media. I don't think that's that big of a deal. But like, we don't use TikTok, for example. I, I, don't, have have one I don't have one for the stall. business, but I don't really use it. And even if we did, I don't think we'd get much. I think you get more from Instagram. You might you get more from Facebook in a, in a business sense. So to me, it's, it's just pure entertainment. Right. Um, I posted um, one. That's the only thing that I posted from the business. Um, maybe two years ago. A while back. And that was it. I've never really done anything. TikTok. And now you have contracts in China. <laughs> I don't use it. So we sold uh, our first Chinese job. <laughs> it's too much. I mean, it's too much to keep up with. I mean, if you have to keep up with with all of the social medias already for for the company and for personal life, you know, for that matter, and for podcasting, that's too much. Well, we I have to hire people to do that, and uh, we do everything, you know, ourselves. So it's a lot. And I think each platform kind of serves its own purpose. And TikTok had its own purpose, but it was really diving into or kind of cornering some other markets where it was, remember Vine? Mm -hmm. remember yeah, Vine? I do, I do, yeah. It was a 30 second video or mm -hmm. less, if I remember right, and that was it. And then they finally expanded. They're like, oh, now you can do 60 and stuff. And then, you so know. You, Elon put out a poll on X asking if he should bring it back or not. Yeah, and it, overwhelmingly, a lot of people were like, yeah, bring they it back. Want it. Yeah. So, and he can profit Vine, from that. American, if it was American, Vine could replace TikTok. It's the same platform essentially. Mm -hmm. So if they make it tour, you can do the same. I don't know what the uh, trademark copyright is on that, but people do that all the time. They take American products and go do them in China or vice versa. Right. So, different markets. My my biggest thing, and I know you you touched on it, Dylan, was that the difference between American TikTok and Chinese TikTok. Mm -hmm. Of all things, yesterday evening, I got an email. You too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know what I mean. Yeah. From, so apparently. The Independent School District. From the Round Rock. Well, but not just Round Rock. It came to Pflugerville and other, yeah, other all, school all districts. Of yeah, all, all of the it. Apparently on TikTok, it was declared National Rape Day. So it was just some type of prank or some type of malicious yeah. rumor that gets started. And I mean, how many of these challenges have been started and gone viral? The, you know, the Tide Pod, 
challenge. But if that is not on TikTok, it's on another, you know, platform. You know, if the platform for kids, that's what they're going to be targeting. But I feel like Facebook Facebook and YouTube does a little bit better job of monitoring those type of things because... But they're not for kids. The kids are not on it. Right. But that's the thing is so kids are mainly on TikTok and TikTok's not doing anything to moderate or control any of these, these uh, you know, yeah. trends or anything like that that are going viral. Mm -hmm. They're kind of letting it happen, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. under the guise of freedom of speech. But, you know, at what point do you kind of start going like, okay, it's it's nice to make, a, you know, some type of viral, you know, thing viral where you help a homeless person. Like, you know, that's a nice viral thing. But rape day and have that go viral and not do anything about it. I think that is just, that's where I draw the line and I refuse to have it or, you know. Support it. Support it in any manner or have my family, you know, have have it so that's how i feel about it yeah i guess april is um national like rape awareness month so mm. they picked that day as kind of like a malicious way of like throwing it back in their face so. but there's some young from my understanding i read like a new york times article about it and it was started by people that were just trying to advocate that it should it's legal and there's nothing wrong with doing that and blah, blah, blah. Legal where? What the fuck kind of place? So, yeah, I wrote thing, what, something here that there. is similar to what you said, which is on the realms of manipulation and influence regarding social reengineering. Um, if, if you have a platform that 200 million Americans are using it or at least having contact with, think about the power of manipulating, of creating um, internal uh, turmoil. You know, through this. In, in, in kids' heads. Civil unrest. It's civil unrest, yeah. So, uh, you know, so this is one of, one of the things that I'm, I'm concerned when I, when I brought it. Not that I agree with that, but um, definitely it's something that should have a surveillance and much better. You see, so I want it a small state, but I we need to be protected against this, against a gigantic state. Well, but hold on. A, a state takes care of security, right? A small state. Um, well, parts of security, yes, yeah. parts of it. So, and that you know falls into that. Yeah, my uh, manipulating mindsets and, and and I expect brain war, brain brainwashing this um, year, being an election year. Do you remember for a year, people are saying the same thing about Zoom? Remember that Zoom? Like I I I don't I, I don't use Zoom because of the same concept. Everything was being said in the companies. They said well, that's it, right. Zoom yeah. is a uh, Zoom is also a Chinese. A Chinese company. Yeah, I forgot about that. And how many businesses, business meetings, businesses that you oh, let's meet on Zoom, do a Zoom meeting. The whole population then from TikTok to Zoom are somehow you know the Chinese would have access to all of this. Mm -hmm. So um, the social reengineering re might happen this way. And you mentioned something also. Oh, yeah, yeah. You mentioned something about uh, also uh, how addicted people are to that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how, wh where are you guys on the gambling? I, I, it has to do with that. How do you feel about gambling? It should be somehow uh, curbed, more curbed, or it's already curbed enough? Oh, huh. that's an interesting question. Because I feel it like it's curbed enough. I mean, particularly like in Texas, we can't even on the like, gamble. So if you download FanDuel or some of these other apps, like we can't gamble. Right. You, you, so you have to go outside. So it's already dictated here. Right. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's a, you can get it's a slippery slope. You can get into alcohol. You know, people are heavily addicted to alcohol. Do you ban alcohol? Do you put a? You know, you have to scan your driver's license. You can only buy this amount of you know liquor, spirits per month. This amount of beer per like how, the regulation on that's just kind of iffy. But it's a real problem. People have severe addictions to gambling. I know people from college that they use their monthly paycheck to, to gamble to get money back to pay their rent because they already spent their money. And when you're up, it feels great. And when you're down, it feels like the world is on your shoulders, you know? I, have a, so I don't know. I have a great story of one of my buddies. He had an exchange student uh, living with them, and he was from Vietnam. 
went his final year of high school in the United States. And then afterwards, he graduated and he was able to get a job, and he was a huge poker player. Okay, was down about sixty or seventy thousand dollars, down to his last twenty grand in his bank account. Jesus. Basically, went you know what? Fuck it. Withdrew all twenty grand, went to the casino, and came out there one point five million dollars richer at the end of the day. But after that, he he concluded like I can't do this anymore. I he paid for his house, he paid for his car, he paid for uh, paid off his college, paid off all of his debts, and and quit. But it's one of those stories of I mean, it can happen. You're down to your last dollars. In your account, and how that is that is one of a million that happens. Exactly, and I don't advocate for anyone to follow that because gambling is all just luck. Well, you know, at the end of the day, some skill, especially when you know playing poker, but a lot of it, <clears throat> the luck of the draw. Corin, I go to Vegas for the trade show for the the company every year, and then I see in the morning when we. Uh, going to the trade show so wake up about 7 30 go down have breakfast at eight because the trade show only opens at nine and then you see people on the machines just like bling, bling, you know <laughs> and they look like my grandma they they had been all you know all night yep. because yeah. everything looks the same do you mean like it, the light never changes you know, if you don't go outside, you don't see if it's day or night. My my grandma was a huge, gambler. huge gambler. Uh, we we used to live in Reno, Reno, Nevada. And they used to live in Northern California and would drive over. And my grandma would do that. She'd rent a room and gamble for 20 plus hours, nonstop. This little, my grandma was like four foot nothing, weighed 90 pounds just smoking cigarettes. She would have cartons of cigarettes. Cartons, not just a couple packs here and there, cartons Both of, cartons. and just Chains menthol, her. and just gamble all day. She she would get constant invites and free rooms, and yeah, That's come stay with you. the circus circus again, you know, come back, you know, we got you. you know, buffet's on us, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, don't worry about it. But she would just spend, I, she's, she won thousands and thousands of dollars, but she also lost a lot of money. But she would just sit there in front of that, in front of that. Uh, she liked the slot machines, and just sit there and just pull so that handle. Just pull the handle. Right, and then we. And, see and you're absolutely right. It's, it's right. this year. Yeah, this year the first time I saw husband and wife, and they're doing that. And they're like maybe <laughs> kind of late sixties. Yeah. First time, because every time I, I saw somebody previous years, there's always like just a, one person. But this time I saw, and then I was, you know, Carol was there. We could, didn't, didn't go because he got COVID. <laughs> he couldn't fly. But um, yeah, it was it was like that. It was like I refuse to wear a mask. So ga good gambling advertisement would be gambling better than sex. <laughs> Yeah. Like <laughs> at this age, right? Like dopamine, you know? <laughs> exact dopamine, chia, yeah. It might be cheaper. <laughs> it yeah. might be cheaper. It might cause it you could less, be. less problems. I just <laughs> definitely uh, not gonna have heart disease. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I just took notes here of, uh, of something that in Portuguese we call we say banco, which is bank. E banca, banco. So the last letter changed to banco e banca. Banca basically is the gambling company, right? So the person who is behind. So we say that Banqui Banca never loses. Mm, always. They they always win, right? Yeah. So it doesn't have Banco. Okay? You never beat Banqui Banca, right? So the gambling companies. So for that to happen, it's all about odds, right? Uh, what are the odds that this guy, that thousands of people go there, lose $60,000, then they try the 20 and then win 1.5. That Those odds are, you know, like, off the charts. But now, more. there is another odd that is even worse. How many people would stop after winning 1.5 million? Mm. 
Do you understand? So I'm like, right. what are the odds? The, the two things happen at the same time. This is lottery. This is just winning the lottery. Right. Literally. Well, at, at that point, it, it turns in, into this is an addiction. It's more of a means of making an income, and, and, and you won your lottery. You won your lottery, you won your income for the next couple of years. Take it easy, take it slow, but you're never going to do that again. You but know how, how do you stop if you are a gambler? Well, that's, that's the thing. And that's why I asked about gambling and TikTok exactly because of that. How, if, you're, if you have a miserable life, and then you have a Vision Pro, and then you have it the TikTok in your Vision Pro. What's going to be better than that? Just scrolling through the, yeah. You blink and it scrolls. It has to be taken away from you. You know, that's how you stop. Do you, do you, do you see that? This is why I'm going to take control because whatever you're trying to do. We can do it. I even have a rule, right? So uh, if I participate in a, you know, like, like, like the NBA now, like just for fun, it's like $10, I think. So if I win, I get five hundred dollars. That's how much I can spend for the you know for the rest of my life until I, I win again. If I win another contest or whatever uh, draw, right, and I make a one thousand more, I can spend that one thousand dollars because I made that one thousand dollars based on, on on betting, on gambling. Well, and like that's different too, where it's like if you view it as entertainment in that way. Like you go out to the movie theater. Netflix, for example, and you'll spend 40 bucks or something like that. It's something you enjoy. So fantasy football, F1, like these leagues where it's like a $20 buy-in or something and you're not like obsessively, I don't think there's a problem with that. It's entertainment. You're paying for it. You know, like going to see a movie. It's all the same. But the problem is people will join leagues that are like $1,000 and we have five of them, you know, in the hopes of winning 15 grand or something. But I met a guy in uh, the Dominican at the resort we were at. Just ran into him at the bar. They were there because someone and his family was getting married. He was saying out his fantasy league, the winner gets like five grand. And so he was like banking on it to pay his rent at the end of the season or something. Because he had already <laughs> right. lost. And I was like, Jesus. He was like, but it's fine because I won last year. So I'm like, I know what I'm doing. Oh. Like, oh okay. Past results are a guarantee of future results, right? <laughs> yeah. We all know that. Yeah, really. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One Manuel Fangio would be racing now and winning, and you know, still. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So. Yeah. There's a line you draw where it starts to become an addiction instead of just something that is casual. You know, but that can be said about many things. Yeah. Yeah. Alcohol, yeah. drugs. Yeah. Medicine, TV, Viagra. Yeah. Porn. Right? Yeah, porn. Sex. Yeah. People become addicted to all kinds of things. But should you ban it? Um, how much control is accepted? How much limitations is accepted to those businesses, you know? Huh. I think we're all allotted freedoms and you know, if you choose to spend your time doing that, then that's kind of on you. The rest of the country that's not doing all this stuff, I mean, and some of it comes down to mental conditions and things that, so it gets the, the water, it's rough, it's very gray, you know? It's hard to say one way or the other. I don't think you can just tell someone they can't do something, you know? That's not illegal, you can't ban things. But at the same time, like if somebody just keeps making the wrong decision, the wrong decision, the wrong decision, you gotta ask like, what's going on in your head? Because normal people don't do that, you know? But I don't think the government should bail you out because you spent your life savings on gambling. But I think you should have the freedom to be able to do it. Well, I can say the same thing for low student loans. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna. I, I want to study at arts, for example. Yeah. Great, great. Are you gonna make enough money later to pay for your loans, so your student loans? Typically not. So please be careful when you're gonna ask me to bail you out on this, mm -hmm. because for five more. years you haven't produced anything, and it's fine. It's just like the other, the other, the other courses, right? the other classes but what's gonna what you're gonna do with that later work at a museum yeah. that's a finite amount of jobs though that's it you know like so when should to drive uber yeah when, <laughs> <laughs> to complement your 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 income yeah right? and what sucks is like obviously you don't need a degree to do that well so. now now people say drive uber but before not too long ago five six years ago 
And people were like, oh, just take like a Walmart stocking. Yeah, like nice stocking. Nice stocking here. job. Sure. That was the second the second job. I did that. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why is that? I worked at a grocery store. Uh -huh. Stocking shelves. Just a night shift. Bunch of degenerates you work with. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the gambling thing, yes. The problem is if addicted gambler has a young kid that cannot have, you know, the financials controls for their own needs because they need a grown up to provide still. So that's where the problem is because then you go like, okay, and then you gotta take the kid out of that parent I'm to say put her in a foster home or something like that. That becomes a problem. So, um, Cora, do you have anyone in your life that would, if you start gambling, they would say, hey, buddy, hey, buddy, look, I noticed you're gambling, you're not spending less time with us. Um, I noticed that you sold your car. Come on, what's what's going on? Do you have people in your 100%. life who's going to do that? Yeah, 100%. Do you respect these people? Yeah. Okay. So I also have it. Someone who's going to be like brutally honest with me and they they would, they would tell me this. Right. They won't stop. But what if, what if people don't have that? Or a lot of people don't. A lot of it, people don't. Yeah, yeah, especially if you migrate from one city, from one state to a different state, when you have, you have nobody to help you there. Yeah. So those are the ones that are actually more exposed, and especially because when it rain, when it rains, it pours. Yeah. Right. So you move to a state that you have no job, you don't you don't know you don't even know where to stay, how to how you got accommodate yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Like this person is exposed. And then you are there. It's free, man. It's free, right? right. It's free to just TikTok it. We're still in the first three. Do you know what I'm saying? So, then you know the the four pack is good. I'm a Jedi on 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 pipe smoke. I'm I'm still going on my first. Same on my first day. Yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm still eating pistachios. <laughs> <laughs> That that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Man, right, look at that. You know, I was trying to find a link. I couldn't find it. It was something I saw on X. wasn't sure if it was true, but apparently some mom um, in court had a, she was uh, on drugs and her baby wouldn't stop crying. Like she was all messed up. And she was trying to get her baby to stop crying and she ended up smothering it, I think, with a pillow or something and killed her baby. And then in court, she admitted to killing her child, but was able to. She was found not guilty at the end of it because of the drugs that were affecting her. Hmm. So, to me, I mean, you you could have people that gamble all their money away and they can't support a child and blah blah blah. But I'm still not being the way the laws are. Pretty, you could make a case that that's child abuse. Exactly. But other than that, it's like people have freedom to do what they want with the things that they've earned you work and make 10 bucks an hour and then you spend all your money on something else and your kids have no clothes to wear and it's a terrible thing but people's kids don't get taken away from them for that unfortunately you see that type of stuff all the time and, and, and yeah and then we navigate to turbulent waters because this is a discussion whether the government should control or should have a say on this versus not having a say on this. Of course, from my point of view, you see government is small, super well paid to the point that like, think about back in Brazil there, Hilton, mm. where um, a policeman would make, for example, 300,000 has, the person would think twice before getting corrupt. Oh, you, yeah. would, you, you, you think, Three, four times, because you okay, just well, huh? because your project well. right. Okay, I still have thirty years of my career, thirty years times whatever I have to versus twelve, so three hundred sixty months times how much I make. This must make up for everything that I am, I'm actually risking. 
Um, and then I would go, I, w I would go along with what you say. I mean, ultimately, you have the chance to choose. You have, you should have the, the choice. The problem is, there's there's still idiotic people out there that be like three hundred thousand AIs. That's cool, but I could make a million AIs yeah. if I started taking bribes. If I was a corrupt asshole. If I'm not, if I'm not caught. Yeah, if I'm not caught. No matter what, no matter. <laughs> And I think that's the the argument is that sometimes doing the wrong thing is the thrill of doing the wrong thing is the adrenaline not, not getting caught not getting yeah, caught it's the adrenaline yes right? yes I think that's the addiction it's it's like a comedian that goes and tells a joke and everybody laughs and that's that rush that yeah yeah no absolutely and I think it no matter what if you're an honest person police officer firefighter whatever you get paid three hundred thousand dollars a year phenomenal. But there's always going to be one, two, you, ten. You change your lifestyle to that, and then that's not enough anymore. Exactly. And and now you do need the bribe again. Have you guys watched uh, Better Call Saul? Mm -hmm. Remember Kim Wexler? Mm -hmm. His girlfriend. Do you remember that she was a fantastic lawyer? She was making more than a million a year at a certain point. But every but why did she why did she like Saul? Because he he always had this little thing, this trick that you know what like she wouldn't get caught if she broke the law, and she would break the law. Actually, she loved him for that. So this is the character that you're mentioning, right? Yeah. Um, think think about that. There is this statistic. I don't know. I, I don't remember which year, but it was in the '90s. There there were seventy thousand policemen in São Paulo. Seventy thousand, and then the guy said that. Oh, 10% of any policeman in the world, police force in the world, is corrupt. 10% oh. is always corrupt. That's this, this is what the name, the number he came from my study. The point is that 7,000 people, 7,000 organized crime. Think about this in a city. The point is, do you have incentives? Is that impunity? Oh, well, this, th this country has more impunity. So of course this number is gonna if you're gonna seduce other people, this number is gonna go to twenty percent. But whereas in some other countries, if you do that, you lose your hand. Sure. So you cut the incentives. So yes, there are ten thousand. Uh, I'm sorry, ten percent. There is gonna be corrupt no matter what. Right. But are you gonna risk your hand? Right. So. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, but it depends. And, and to your point, it depends on where you are in the world to to have those. You know those consequences of doing so and i think that's it is a lot of people like hilden saying there's that rush and then also it's just your moral compass of like there's some people out there that are just i care less it's all about me i don't care about the greater good i don't care about anyone else i'm just trying to get what's best for me mm -hmm. or if they've had a shitty upbringing and they just they're like i don't have anything else to live for under your shit exactly exactly what if you feel disenfranchised by your government what if you believe that the government doesn't represent you and then they create laws that is against you. What are you, going, what are you going to say? Are you are you breaking the law? If you don't feel represented, it, it it's complicated. Then um, are the laws are you the law because of you are but you are yeah. you don't care you don't feel like it but yeah it still is yeah but uh, how long have we been going an no. hour yeah and then I I just dumped out my ashes that are smoked ashes. There's nothing left, so you can hmm. get a long smoke out of a out of a pipe, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I I don't know how I accomplished uh, this far on this tiny bowl. Your bowl is a little bit bigger. My yeah, my bowl is bigger, and I don't pack it as much as as you guys do. Dylan's is packed packed to the brim. I already released like half of the ashes, and I still have some fresh tobacco to go. Through. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I do. Although I might. I do. Do you remember the movie Glorious Bastards? Love that movie. Of course. Right. So the the first scene, the guy picks up and pulls a big big pipe and then Landa oh, And then Landa goes there and pick up a gigantic one. <laughs> do you remember that? Just to say like mine and mine is bigger. Do you yeah. remember the scene? Yeah. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah, yours is big. I, I can see that. Let me show you mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Typical guy thing. You're like gigantic. Well, it's always a bigger fish. Yeah, yeah. right? 
And it could be 392 years old. You never know. Unless you radiocarbon date it. Exactly, right? <laughs> well, hey, uh, speaking of gambling and everything else, uh, an avenue of gambling is also sports betting. And what's going on in the sports world, but NBA playoffs, which have been exciting. Have, have you guys been paying attention to it? Yes. Do you? Oh, no. good. I've been watching. You got to get into well, it, man. Attention to Formula One. Oh, okay. We'll get into Formula One. Yeah, we yeah. have Formula One too, and and basketball. Yeah, the basketball yeah. playoffs are kind of taking precedence right now because it's great because uh, usually the true excitement starts in the semifinals, right? So um, and then it right and then we are having like exciting games. Getting good already. Yeah. Hey, hey, look. We've got the Buccaneers and the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Show that dealing with the mouse. Uh, so you got the Buccaneers and the Packers playing. Yeah, that's that, that public school education working out for Hilton. <laughs> yeah, we had a few, a couple of, uh, the, in the first round, <laughs> right? The first round. I'm <laughs> 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 looking dead. <laughs> Look yeah. at the look at the chances of uh, Lakers and and Heat to win according to this shady website. <laughs> Lakers only eighty eight percent percent. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think that's a fair a assessment fair percent, uh, percentage because the Lakers lost game one, but game two they put up a really good fight. But you know what? Last year they lost. They were they were swept. Yeah, and every single Man, game was that three, four was points difference. Points difference. Yeah. Hold on, so two point. Yeah, it was at the one. Mm -hmm. uh, again, um, to ninety nine. To ninety nine, yeah, yeah. hundred and one to ninety nine. Actually, they were winning, and then they lost at the very last second. Yeah, Murray, um, you know, scored on arguably one of the three best defenders in the league. It was impossible. It was a Jordan Jordanisk shot. It was a Kobish. Kubisk, short, uh, you know, like shots for a guy, and he's done that for a couple of years now in the playoffs. Jamal Murray, yeah, he gets no love whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is so um, so incredible to me. He does so much, and everyone's like, "Yeah, okay, cool, whatever." Yeah, I don't get it. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. But Dallas against that's Clippers. your team, right? That's uh, uh, I'm just a Dallas fan, but. Game one, they could not keep up. No, they couldn't. And how many stars played in the first game for the Clippers? Only, it was only like only Harden. It was only Harden in Westbrook. And Westbrook, yeah, Westbrook. Russell played. Yeah, but PGA, but Paul George and uh, Kyrie Irving didn't play, and they won. Kawhi was on the bench. It was like thirty points, twenty points, twenty something. I was wondering because I haven't watched the regular season at all. I just now. Started watching. I saw him on the bench. Was that just strategies? He injured Westbrook? or something? No, uh, Kawhi Leonard. Um, well, he's injured, and they, he's been uh, man, low. He's been doing the load management. So he the was whole, injured. Yeah, but he played quite a lot of games compared to the previous three years. Yeah, he wasn't that injured. Uh, but again, when he plays, the team wins, right? But it mm -hmm. doesn't. It doesn't translate into a uh, to win yesterday. Because Luca and Kyle and Kyrie, they were hot. They they weren't until they were like they played the fourth quarter was ridiculous. They were like ten points behind. Well, they get up. Yeah. Well, I mean, basketball is a very momentum based game. When people get hot and they just keep rolling with it, but it's crazy when you see someone score, you know, fifteen points, and the other team. That's what I kept thinking would happen in game one because they were down like 15 20 points they never got within like 10 i think at the very beginning of the game the first quarter they were down like 10 zero or something yeah and then they were never able to even come back within 10 points and i kept True. thinking maybe after the second half they're gonna get hot no it just never happened and on the lakers game to your point lakers was 20 points ahead yeah mm -hmm. they yeah. were 20 points ahead and um right so right in the beginning of the third quarter and they lost it's been like lakers and and the uh, the nuggets won the last 10 matches against lakers it's always been like that you yeah. know like they are they, they pull ahead they get tired lebron get tired of um ad scores zero points in the last quarter he scored he scored 32 points in two quarters and zero he was just disappears 
gassed out. He like people uh, you you could see the cameraman were on his face the whole game. He knew it what would happen. Yeah. He was like he couldn't even breathe. He was so tired. He's a seven footer, so uh, if he plays so hard, it's just like a marathon, just like a, whatever you if you run too fast, if you give too much in the beginning, it compromises, right? Now, right? Uh, down the road. Yeah. So in basketball, seven footer is, is like a short guy. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Still a big guy, but there's bigger guys. Yeah. Than you. But yeah, yeah. Um, LeBron bet on him to be, you know, like, oh, well, this guy, they won a ring together yeah. in the Mickey Mouse League, right? The COVID League. <laughs> the COVID League, yeah. yeah. Um, but there are not, not too many surprises there, you know, um, except from that. Mickey Mouse. Yeah, the Mickey Mouse. Yeah, it's just like people like. Nah, I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm not disc discrediting. They won, and sure. that's it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they won it. Tell us how you really feel. Huh? Tell us how you really feel about uh, that. Man, it, it is what it is. You can only win. People complain about, oh, Jordan had easier finals. You can only mm -hmm. beat what you can beat, you know? Yeah. Right? So he did not have easier finals. No, he didn't. The but guys. The guys are like punching each other at <laughs> yeah. that time. Yeah. No, and think about that. It was Come on. Sean Kemp, the Glove, people, I think people will sleep on those guys. People don't, don't know how good they were. Yeah. You know, how hard it was to get to the finals against the Orlando, uh, Tim Hardaway and, and, and Shaquille O'Neal, right? So you, it was super hard to get there. Yeah. But anyway, so it's exciting. I think I didn't expect it to be that, to, to, you know, to be that in the... First round. In the first round. Uh, Philadelphia and the, you watch it Philadelphia and in, in the Nick in the Nick side. Dude, that <laughs> game was ridiculous. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. And I really think if if Dallas didn't trade Jalen Brunson to New York and Jalen would have stayed, could you imagine Luca, Jalen, and possibly Kyrie and on Kyrie. the same team? But one would have to sit in the bench. That's the point. Yeah, you would swing but that something. that means, hey, you always have somebody out there, though. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You're going to score off the bench a lot. You get a lot and, of points off the bench. And Kyrie is 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 uh, notorious for injuries, so he might be able yeah. to rest and stuff like that and, and be fresh longer, you know, longer stretches. But that would have been a super powerhouse yeah. team. I, I hate really the person, the and budget. I love the player. I don't Kyrie, Kyrie even. Yeah. I, love, I love the player. I mean... No one handles the ball the way he does. No. Like, I, I can't right. remember no, but anyone ever. Yeah. So. I don't expect Dallas to make it out of round one, but it'd be awesome if they did. I think Because I will. could just, I mean, I could see them going all the way to the end and then losing it. Because like you said, the superstars on the other side, I don't know. It's yeah. basketball. We have to wait and see. But I, I don't know. It, it really, Luca and Kyrie have to. They have to be to on To step it. up, right? That, that relit you just did? Uh, but they have to smoke? continue to oh, do it. so good. Yeah, like... That's, that's the four-pack. Yeah. Tell you, I'm a Jedi. It's a trademarked, <laughs> trademarked four-pack method over here. Yeah, really. I might have to change my three to four on this one. No, it smells Do really good. Time. I'll yeah. show you how it's done. Yeah, okay. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Son of a bitch. <laughs> Another exciting game was the Thunders versus the Pelicans. You well, see, the Pelicans. I'm, I'm on the last leg. Yeah. yeah, I am too. The Pelican had the Pelicans had um, um, Zion Williams is injured again. He's not going to play the playoffs if they if they go through again. Oh really? What happened? It was ni um, oh, what 92 happened? to 94, huh? Yeah, it was, it was the, the last, last game, the the last play again. It smelled good though. And Shy oh, again leg. shined. Shy, uh, Shay, right? Shy, Shy, yeah, Shy, Shy Gillis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shy yeah from the, uh, the Canadian. Yeah, really. Yeah, so it's been exciting. Um, it's been usually, a lot of fun. Yeah, I usually, uh, I actually subscribe for all the games only, you know, by During May, May, only May. Yeah. You know, but this one, <laughs> I had to, I had to admit, like, I'm going to have, uh, I already subscribed it because I want to watch the games. Yeah, I'm lucky on like YouTube TV, I've been able to watch like all the ones that are in the you know, on ESPN. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I need with to do Amazon, about, like, keeping up when they're gonna start though, but it's it's often. 
Um, yeah, Amazon Prime also is. Um, you, can, you can watch a lot of games on Amazon Prime. Yeah, I was doing that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I might have to turn on some games. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, my bet is that uh, I still bet on the Nuggets for what I see. Um, yeah. You no, they look good. No, There's a reason they're uh, number one, right? Yeah, they're, yeah well. Number one seed? No, they were number two seed. Uh, um, um, number two. Number two, yes. Oklahoma was number one. And yesterday, there was a fantastic game, too. Uh, the Minnesota Timberwolf, Timberwolves and versus Phoenix. It's 2 new. Yeah. They were beaten twice. And I don't know. You see, this is one thing about having three players, you know, the super teams. How many worked? How many super teams worked? It's it's hit or miss. That's a good. That would be an interesting thing to kind of go back through all like three like three man super teams and see which ones have done successful and haven't done successful. Boston won one ring. They 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 they, they, um, they, they would have been three four rings. The well, Heat. Miami the Heat yeah they won two. They were supposed to to win eight. LeBron Dwayne Wade yeah. Chris Bosh. The Warriors. The Warriors. the Warriors. The Warriors lost. They they won two, but they lost one to Cleveland. Yes, yeah, that was, but that was a great. But it that wasn't. Was a great it wasn't a super team yet. It that. wasn't a super team yet because Duran well, Duran wasn't playing there. You understand? Duran wasn't playing there. They were. Yeah, strong. But you could still say that Who about third guy? Draymond Green, Curry, and and Thompson. Draymond Green, Tom and Clay Thompson. Thompson. Yeah. yeah. So you could you could use them as like the super team, yeah. three man super team, but but, but usually, you're right, you're right. But usually they refer to super teams when you when you actually put the players together, right. not when they come from the draft, you know. Right, right, right. right so right. like Jordan and P and Pippen are not considered part of a super team. Nice. Because they were brought over. They were brought over. Yeah. yeah so, okay. okay. Yeah. So Dennis Rodman coming definitely changed things for Chicago. Uh, for Chicago, yeah, but he was. Yeah, he won a championship in in, uh, in Detroit. Yeah, and he was thirty six years old when he joined when he joined uh, uh, the Sh- Chicago the Bulls. Think about today. Oh no, thirty six years old playing a team. You're not considering. Oh, who, who today would move? Curry, LeBron, and LeBron Curry. Durant is thirty four. Thirty four. He's going to be thirty five, maybe. Yeah. But he proved that whatever he goes, he doesn't win anymore. Curry wins, not KD wins. Not KD. Yeah, no, yep. they're because they're down right now, right? The Suns, two new. They're not doing good at all. I have not liked them at all this year. Yeah, nah. KD hasn't played well. And I gotta well. watch a game. I haven't watched it yet. Well, yeah, you gotta watch a game, Hilton. It's is been... there gonna be a, ga- a game tonight? There's one There's... that just it already started. There's game and now, where is it on? I'll tell you. Might be on Amazon Prime. Yeah. Maybe. Right now, yeah. So you got Boston playing the second game. Boston, yeah. Boston, <laughs> Boston. Celtics, me. Yeah, Boston and Miami. Oh, that's a tight game. I never, I so didn't far. expect that. Yes, ma'am. I'll pull it up. Yeah. Yes, PN. Um, do you see? No, you you gotta do the moving thing. You oh yeah, well, I'll leave. But just so you gotta have your dad. What's that? <laughs> He's gonna have his dad. Oh. oh. Anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what's going on about Formula One? Let's let's uh, switch it up and well, get out of here. Last uh, last race, uh, Hamilton got a second place on the uh, sprint. sprint race, oh, wow. okay. which was very exciting. And then he went to qualify, and he qualified like minus two. Jesus Christ! He, in his defense, in the back. Yeah, he, uh, he he said that it was a very poor performance from him that day. Like he just ended up having a bad day, and he caught like a really unfortunate tailwind, and it was the last lap chance that he had to qualify and get to the next round, and it just didn't happen for him. Mm. So that being said, he did finish the race, I believe, in ninth or was it eighth? I think it was eighth, and then uh, in the points. So okay. he got points. He got points. But um, he led Who the won? sprint race for, for a while. Oh, yeah. Second place. What was your ride? It was Lando Norris on the podium in second place. Lando wow. Norris is for McLaren. McLaren. Yeah, that's right. So it was kind of refreshing. And then uh, Sergio Perez back in third. And then, which is interesting because um, I think he finished uh, 
second, 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 like first, and then second, and second. He's been finishing second and, 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 and won first place. Maybe a third um, so far? Like, right, how many races? Like, four races? So far? Five. Five. He's been finishing Best well. Best won four, right? Yeah, and the only one he didn't was he had a car issue. Yeah. yeah. In Australia. He's been finishing well. He's been doing well. That's right. Yeah, the Chinese GP. Um, the Chinese one was won before. Let's go back to the beginning. Bahrain. Because I don't know if it's been a third. I haven't paid that much attention to it. Lando Norris in sixth. Okay. Saudi, Lando Norris in eighth. Australia, Lando Norris third. He got podium. Okay, now he got podium. Okay. Japan, fifth. China, second. And then Miami's coming right. up next. So, what did I say? Because I yeah, saw a graph on range. there, and there was like... Could be quality. quality. Well, no, because he's not qualifying in second place either, but... I saw a graph that was like that, but yeah. He is doing well, though. I, I probably was almost as neat. So, yeah. Uh, Lando Norris. <laughs> I've been looking like a, because that's kind of like Sergio Perez has been doing that. Like, he's been getting second place a lot. Second places, okay. But so he might have been. has been winning. Might but have been him. But has been getting second place every now and then. China, podium, third place. Japan, second place. Australia, even with the, you had the, was fifth. The issue with Verstappen, but he still finished fifth, so it was some good points for them. Saudi, second place. Bahrain, second place. Yeah. So I think you're thinking. So they're doing one, one, two pretty often here. So Red Bull's really jumping out ahead in the constructors. Yeah. Because even with Verstappen. It, it out, is expected, think. though. I mean, that car. It but that being looks so, good and runs good. Yeah. My sleeper driver so far this season. Carlos Sainz, man, he's he's been ending up on podium. Yeah. Third place in the first race. After the announcement that he's going to be out of Ferrari, he's actually showing a lot of talent to be able to get a good seat. So, is it going to be one of those situations where Mercedes Benz picks up Sainz and mm. Hamilton picks up Ferrari? There's a lot of talks about it. Talks about that, but I'm not sure. Where would signs go to if it's not Verstappen? Toto Wolff's waiting to see if um, Verstappen's going to leave Red Bull, which I don't think he will. Why because of all the controversies. There's just been lots of controversy. controversy. Why? Why? His dad is speaking more than his mouth. His dad's kind of like his manager in a way. I don't know if he's officially his manager, but... um, um <clears throat> Is that Christian is speaking a little bit more than his mouth can handle? Christian Horner <laughs> is the team principal for Red Bull. And... There was some allegations against him for misconduct against a female employee um, before the season even started. Okay. And so there was talks about whether or not he was going to remain, and he has. Um, and they found that, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. There was an internal investigation by Red Bull and a third-party investigation. But some people were calling for more based on, like, private messages or something that they were able to see, but none of it's been leaked because implications of being sued. Right. Um, because it's all behind, it's all wrapped up in this investigation link. So we don't really know in the public what, what's really going on. And Verstappen's dad's been talking about how he needs to get away. If Red Bull doesn't want to get rid of him, then they want to leave, potentially. Uh -huh. And that's like really dumbing down. It's more back and forth but that's like the, the essence of it right right and then a lot of people say like, if Verstappen's so dominant why doesn't he prove himself by another car that's not like a dominant car if he's such a dominant racer but when you're that's in your prime, always that's always the top. that's always what people say right yeah so he's a good driver though he is really good driver. he's a classic driver he said yeah. right yeah he is um he's really good it's like, for example, when I, when I talk about Sainz, I don't think Sainz is a really good driver. I think he's a, just a good driver, you know? He's not like uh, the Stroll guy. Lance Stroll. But if you look at the, the numbers, five races in, he is outperforming his teammate, except for the one race he had um, appendicitis, and his appendix basically blew up and ruptured, and then he had to get appendectomy. But, Cut it out. Mm -hmm. So for, During the race? Right before the race. Oh. So very first race, Bahrain, podium, he finishes third. Saudi, right before the race, his appendix is like blowing up. So Ollie Behrman came up from F2 
and drove for Ferrari and got points for them. Wow. That guy's really good, man. Wow. That, that's got, that guy is a He's going to be coming that's up. That's refreshing. Yeah. Australia, the very next race, Carlos Sainz comes back, wins. And wins. Wow. Now, there's an asterisk against this because Verstappen had a car issue and was out of the race. But nonetheless, first Ma- place. Oh, that was Hamilton as well. How about Perez? Um, Perez in this race finished fifth. Wow, he's got so he issues too? Even, he didn't have issues. Mm, mm, so he just finished above a Red Bull. But let's say Verstappen finishes, has no issues, is in first. He got he would have potentially gotten second over his teammate Leclerc, but they ended up with a 1-2 with Ferrari. And he jumped to Japan. Podium, third place. He jumped to China. Now he's dropping down a little bit, but he's finished fifth right behind his teammate Leclerc. But he's been outperforming Leclerc back to back to back. So my yeah, yeah. it's going to be the, interesting. On, on the championship, he has more points. He's up there all. every time. Leclerc does. He has more, but that's because um, Sainz didn't race a, a whole race, but he's missing one race. And he's too. And they're within like a few points of each other. Yeah. So he's outperforming up until this point. And I don't know if it's because he just doesn't have the pressure on him because he knows he's leaving. That's th- or what it is. That like could play. That could free. play a little role on that. And right? maybe Leclerc has a little bit more pressure because he knows, like, oh, I, I gotta look good against my teammate who's leaving that stuff, and so he's driving maybe more stressed. I don't know, but I, I know how you feel about signs, but no, I'm, no, no, he's I, impressed I, me so far this I season. Don't, I don't think he's impressed. a bad driver. I think he's a good driver. He's not a Lewis Hamilton, but yeah, he's impressed me. I told you me. that. I know. But comparing him to Alonso, mm-hmm. you know, Lewis yeah. Hamilton. Verstappen. He's outperformed a lot. And, and, and Norris. I don't outperformed I think, Norris. Well, he has. Up until five. We're five races in, though. But he has, a, he has a, a little bit better car, you know? How old is he? And as always, <laughs> comparing him right. to his dad. You know what I mean? Because his dad, you know, beats I mean, anybody that on the grid. His dad is really It's good. an unfair comparison, though. How yeah, old is he? He's, he's, he's young. Um, I don't know. My age, I think. How good was Hamilton when he was at his age? He was almost won his oh, rookie year. Yeah. He, well, Hamilton finished second. Hamilton, was, Hamilton finished second on his uh, rookie year, but because he made a mistake on the last race. He's two years older than me. Uh, but uh, on the second year, he won the championship. So Hamilton? Yeah. And then Hamilton, he's won seven. The only other driver to do that's Mike this guy. This guy is going to be the next. Thing. He's younger. It's pretty good. Where is he from? Uh, UK. From UK? Britain. Yeah. London. That's the London. <laughs> He's yeah. pretty good. He's from Bristol, like south of uh, England, which mm-hmm. is a nice beach and very windy. That's very, very, say. very windy. I mean, you can lean like a 45 degrees and the wind keeps you up. Really? Yeah. Hmm. He has a face like it's very windy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why he likes men? Yeah. Uh, probably. From yeah. Bristol? He's got family in Chicago, well, actually, right? Actually, yeah. there's a thing in yeah. Bristol, like 50% of the population there, it's um, a gay. A little homo? Yeah. <laughs> are those true I don't statistics? Have any, I was just, yeah. Are those exact numbers? Oh, pretty much. Uh, he's like, actually, it's 52%. It's, it's, yeah. very, yeah. it's, very, <laughs> it's as truth as when I said that he was finishing second every race. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Dylan proved me wrong. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I promised to show my trophy. That I, I beat, around your desk. That I beat PK. <laughs> Woohoo! And I'm going to show. The trophy, when I finish sixth. Yeah, closer, closer. Sir. There you go. You know, to beat PK. That was a trophy. Look at that. That's nice. So, that was the only official race that I ever ran. Uh, because I was my brother's mechanic. <laughs> And this was a, um, uh, there was a like, there was a part, it was the first race of four that you would be selected to be sponsored by Petrobras to uh, race. And yeah. I finished sixth, so I could have gone on. Uh, but I didn't have the money to travel to the other places because it was like out of state. So, but yeah, I finished uh, Hand of Piki on that race. If you have anybody, uh, haters talking shit in the comment, who did you beat? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, and, and I'm the master um, pipe smoker master with my 
Third, ever smoke on a pipe. <laughs> how'd you enjoy, well, and speaking of, how did you enjoy it? Um, I was, I'm more curious about Dylan because I, you know, I already told him my, yeah. Know. Well, I was thinking just going into it that it was going to be a shorter smoke and I was going to go for that um, whiskey blend into the special one. Never made it into the special one, so I'll have to save that for another time. We're going to have to do that, that tomorrow. Whiskey, <laughs> that whiskey blend, it was very nice. It's a, di it's a completely different experience from smoking a cigar because you're not getting these rustic, more muted flavors. Like you, you taste the tobacco a lot more and yeah. it's blended with more flavor. So it's just kind of like a relaxing. The only thing I will say is there is a lot of relighting that could be my um, novice of learning how to pack it and whatnot. No. But I think that's characteristic of smoking pipe is that you do have to relight every now and then. So it doesn't take away from the experience to me, but that's a difference between smoking a cigar where you're not really worried about that. Right. Uh, I think each has its own place. If you're sitting down relaxing in this environment, pipe's great. If you're out at like a barbecue relighting a nice cigar, I would probably prefer a nice cigar. Yeah. And talking, you don't have to worry about relighting so much. Or if you relight, it's just a quick shh, and you know it's not going to go out again for a while. But this right. is like a constant thing. But it's it's uh, it's an engagement. It's a uh, you have to. It's something you would well, probably one thing it might make be because of the the for sure. Yeah, it, it might be as fuck, but <laughs> <laughs> it might be because of the infused pansexualism uh, on the tobacco. <laughs> You know, the, the pipe tobacco is uh, more humid than the cigar. Yes, it is, really it is very much. Very It is very much. So that's one of the characteristics that makes it to go off much sooner. Mm -hmm. And then you have to relight. If you don't keep it on your mouth, puffing on it, uh, it and, and even if you do, and you still have to relight it at some point. But yep. when you relight it, you don't get the bad taste of it. You no. Don't need, you don't need to purge. No. With cigar, when you relight it, you do need to purge, because if you don't purge, you get like a, that bitter taste, because it's more packed and it's more compact. It's, 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 compact, it's yeah. dense. And dense, and then, uh, so you do have to get rid of that, yeah. um, you know, kind of bitter taste that uh, you could get from the relighting. And honestly, this is a lot more like subtle and smooth. It's very like approachable. The, the retro hail is very easy. It's smooth, it's not harsh at all, and the aromatics that come off of it are just it's really nice. Yeah. Well, and what, what it was just to, to, to jump on what you were just saying, Dylan, Hilton just lit up his, <clears throat> relit his pipe Which at was, the very end. At the very end, it, it gave me five puffs, and that yeah. was it. And then it died. Yeah. But the smell of that from the smoke of just those, that last it was too fresh it smelled nice um, yeah it was too like, fresh. A, like a brand new bowl so, yeah I let mine at the end and then I could hear the air at the end yeah like, that bubble you hear yeah. that like the ends up and then I knew it was finally like towards so the just end so as I dumped it out there's a little bit of tobacco in here that's not completely charred so I potentially oh, could have hit that mine um, I feel I feel brown so you know, right, browns right. in there and you see that like like yeah, like this, yeah, right? you have a like little that, bit of like long that, yeah. leaves that you could have. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll that last it could have been mixing with mine because I think I had a couple of long leaves too. Yeah, but I mean that that's an hour. Yeah, that yeah, was, that's what that I would question. Do that? How long it lasts for all of you? Like a, about an hour. You see, uh, not uh, constant puffing, mm -hmm. but about on the three pack. Mm -hmm. or, on the three pack would have lasted about thirty five minutes. This motherfucker over here talking. On my new technique. That's the only one on the internet. Ah, uh, <laughs> it lasts about now. Yeah, lasts uh, about an hour. <laughs> I'd say. I'm gonna do that again. I knew nothing about the four pack. I did a three pack, and mine's mine lasted <laughs> just. It's sort of yours. Yeah, yours had a bigger bowl, but but I don't pack. But it I, I, I kept on puffing. The fuck out of mine. Yeah. I kept on puffing a little bit more than you all. Yeah. But I think yeah. uh, I could you can dial it back. back and do like a set. I believe you and <laughs> do like a 75% of the bowl yeah. and that might be like 35, 40 minutes smoke. But the way I just packed it, I think every time that's going to be like an hour. Yeah. But I, I'd be fine with like a little 30 It does get a hot like though. a little 50%, you know? A little We're going to have to rest this one. Well, it, rest, that's why we have it, two. Yeah. Let it rest. Let it rest. Let it cool down properly before you start taking it apart from the stem and cleaning it and stuff like that. Time tomorrow. Yeah. Cool. I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm glad. I'm it's glad you liked. Cast thing for me, though. Yeah. I'm glad you liked. Uh, like frosty. The I do enjoy the cigar, though. So yeah, yeah I always smoke the pipe. I think again. there's a time and a place for each. Yeah. For sure. 
For sure. I, I think I think in the morning I'm because sometimes not every time when Dylan gets here and uh, he, he goes like I can tell that he smoked a cigar, um, but like to this morning I smoked a pipe and so like there's been like probably 11 hours uh, of the second use of these which is not that good because when I cleaned it just before packing it it was humid you know um, but I have to say uh, he was like no I can't tell it I yeah. cannot tell it because that, as, as you said it, you could smoke inside that's yeah. what I was gonna add is like like you said as an indoor setting like this it's kind of more fitting in a yeah. way you know yeah. Not that, I mean, maybe next week I smoke a cigar, I don't know, but I liked it. Yeah. I was just relieved of my duty, gentlemen, so we can watch a little NBA. Ah. <laughs> well, let's uh, take this up, uh, Corin. Another great topic, another great discussion, another uh, fun time smoking and drinking with friends. Um, so thank you very much for sticking with us on this uh, great episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do not forget to... Comment. Subscribe. Subscribe. Like. Comment. Share, share with your friends. <laughs> yeah, we're, <laughs> we're practicing yeah, it. Yeah, 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 exactly. It'll get better. Let's yeah. try it again. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so I, I will cut it on the uh, production, maybe not. Uh, okay, so we ask again. Shit, I forgot my line. What did I say? Um, please don't forget to. Please do not forget to. Share. Subscribe. Like. And comment. Tell us what you think about a 400-year-old shark, pipe NBA smoking. playoffs, pipe smoking, and uh, we, we, we and the, gambling. The gambling was the most important yeah. subject, right? And also TikTok and all that other <laughs> bullshit. And if you're gonna put some shade on his results, show me your results. Yeah, who did you race? Oh, who did well, you race? okay. Okay, well, Yeah, who did you race? I'll get it again. I'll get it again. <laughs> yeah. You know, somebody like, All right, actually, I got that on my I show. I think Carlos Sr. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is, that, that is tough. <laughs> Although, Pique was three times Formula One World Champion. Yeah, yeah. Carlos it's going to be hard to tie. He's multiple times Rally World Champion. Yeah. yeah. The guy is unbelievable. Yeah, so... Thank you. Au revoir. Ciao.